Hello everyone. All right. Today I'm going to show you um, how to work uh, with uh, 60 frames a second and 120 frame per second and 30 frames per second in Final Cut Pro with a slow motion effect. Uh, I have shot a few things here. A piece, of, just a piece of paper falling. Nothing special. All right. This one is at 30 frames a second. These are all different shots. Just the paper falling. This one is shot at 60 frames a second. And finally, this one is shot at 120 frames a second, but in slow motion. All right, now before I begin, I have to just change the codec of all these clips, which are which I can do via MP Extreme Clip. And I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna do that quickly. But I'm not gonna change the frame rate. I'm just gonna say add batch list, add files, raw, and I'm gonna add all these clips to the batch. And I'm gonna say converted. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna go four two two. I'm not gonna change the frame rate. I'm gonna make a deinterlaced, and I'm just gonna keep it unscaled. All right, and. Yeah, let's put this to the batch. Go. And let's open uh, Final Cut Pro here. All right. I've got two timelines here. One that's 30 frames a second and one that is 60 frames a second. All right. Uh, it's better to work uh, with your output. So if you want your output to be 60 frames a second, it's appropriate to shoot at 60 frames a second because remember it's going to play back at 60 frames per second in real time. So if I take this clip and I put it on my 60 frame per second timeline, I can output it at 60 frames a sec second and I can even upload it to YouTube at 60 frames a second. But I want my output to be 30 frames a second. If you would like the 60 frame shot uh, to be slowed down, it's better to use that in cinema tools, but unfortunately I don't have cinema tools. I'm going to go to my timeline now of 30 frames a second. All right. I'm going to take the 30 frames per second clip and I'm going to put it on the timeline. Okay, and I'm going to slow and I'm going to change speed to 50%. Alright, just so I know, so you know what I'm working with here, I'm going to just put a bit of text on, so you know this is 30 frames a second. Alright, let's give it a render. Alright, this is what 30 frames per second looks like uh, in slow motion. Cool. Got a bit of a ghost effect there, so I'm going to just right click and say change speed and say just delete the frame blending because that's the frames trying to blend into one another. Cool. Not the greatest, but it will do. Now, when I put my 60 frame per second shot on the timeline, it's not going to slow it down because what Final Cut Pro does, it deletes every second frame, so you get like a little jittery effect uh, when you. Uh, when you play it in real time, but uh, unfortunately, I don't have cinema tools. If I put it on cinema tools, I could get a nice slow motion shot. So this is the shot I'm going to get, and as you can, as you can see, I'm just going to view in cinema all frames. You get that little like, sort of jitter jitter effect, but I'm going to say change speed fifty percent. Yeah, as it's still got that little jitter effect, but it still but it still looks all right. Let's see what happens when I slow down 60 frames per second on my other t on my 60 frame per second tile line. If I go change speed and say 50% frame blending. That looks a much that looks much smoother, but if I had but the thing is, I'm not uh, outputting at 60 frames a second. I'm outputting at 30 frames per second. Once again, when you shoot at 60 frames per second, it's not in slow motion, but it's the bear to shoot at 60 frames per second so the editor can slow it down if he wants to, to make a nice slow motion effect. This, this actually looks very nice in slow motion, but unfortunately, I don't have cinema tools, so I can't put that 
into a 30 frame per second timeline because the 60 frame per second shot here all it does it's just taking it's deleting every second frame to make it 30 frames a second on this timeline so it's better to use cinema tools with 60 frames a second but after looking at it it's not that bad now with 120 frames a second as you can see it played pretty pretty fast I'm just going to put it on the timeline as you can see this video is not playing in slow motion at all what it's what final cut pro has done is that it's deleting frames so it's going to match my sequence of 30 frames a second but i want uh this my shot to look like this on my timeline this is the raw footage Now remember this was shot in slow motion at 120 frames a second it wasn't shot at 120 frames a second that's the difference between shooting at 60 frames per second and shooting in slow motion at 60 frames per second because then your film will be slow motion and playing at 30 frames a second now at the moment only this little bit here is playing at 30 frames a second we want the whole thing to play at 30 frames per second so the best solution i found is take these little points here on quicktime drag it out and drag that out all the way so you've got your entire clip and I'm going to say file export to 1080p and on I'll put it on the desktop and I'm going to say paper 120 frames per second playing playing at 30 frames per second save let's let that export go all right now as you can see I've got the same clip here at still 1080p and I'm going to say uh, window show movie inspector and it's now at 30 frames a second and let's see if it's going to play in slow motion let's get the part where the paper falls so can you see the difference now I've shot this at 120 frames a second but in slow motion and all I did was export the full thing at 30 frames a second but it's still 100 shot at 120 frames a second so as a result it's going to play in slow motion which I want to be uh, in my timeline all right now that I've got this all right it's still not it's still not a very good input because it's remember it's h264 I just want to change the codec so I'm going to put this on MP extreme clip and I just want to, all I want to do is change the codec to uh, oops, Apple Pro is 422. You can use HQ if you want to. I'm just using 422 to save time. Alright, and I'm just going to put it, uh, let's put it in the converted here. Uh, save. All right, let's go here. Editing products, paper, converted, Apple Pro, and let's just check. Show movie inspector, Apple Pro, Apple Pro is four two two HQ, and let's see if it's still if my paper is still going to be in slow motion. And yes, it is. All right, now let's get this onto the timeline. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go Final Cut Pro, and I'm gonna say Import Files, uh, Paper, uh, Converted Apple Pro one, and I've called it Paper 120 frames per second, playing at 30 frames per second. Cool, and that's how you get 120 frames per second on the timeline. Remember what I said about 60 frames, rather use cinema tools if you want that slow motion effect, otherwise you're going to get this jittering effect. But that's the difference between shooting at 60 frames per second and shooting in slow motion at 120 frames a second. Shooting at 60 frames gives the editor the opportunity to slow it down, whereas shooting in slow motion means it's slow down anyway. Alright, let's, re let's render this and just see the differences between all of them.
Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you very much.